Hey everyone, in this video I'll be talking about thunderstorms. I'll explain the different types of thunderstorms, the stages in which a thunderstorm forms and the hazards we as pilots face. It's a very interesting topic, so let's dive into it. Thunderstorms occur in a well developed cumulonimbus cloud. Not all CB clouds will form thunderstorms. There are certain conditions which are likely for a thunderstorm formation. And these conditions are first, that the air must be unstable. Unstable meaning that the air must rise. So, in this diagram, you can see that the air is rising. That means that the air is unstable. The next condition is that there should be enough moisture present in the cloud for a thunderstorm formation. So, like this. There is a lot of moisture over here. And the last condition is that there should be a force to push the air up. Like in this, we can see that the wind is coming from the left and it is pushing the air up. So this is another condition for thunderstorm formations. Now these forces which lift the air up are known as trigger actions. And there are four of these. So the first trigger action is convection. So convection is when the surface heats up and the air starts to rise. This is the most common trigger action and it is very prominent over the land in the summer season because we know that the land heats up faster. So in convection, the sun heats the ground and when the air starts to rise, clouds are formed. So the thunderstorms formed are isolated and mostly during the day. Isolated because the surface heating may not be uniform. That means on some places the ground would be very hot and somewhere the ground would not be very hot. So the thunderstorms will be isolated. Now the next trigger action is known as the orographic lifting. So orographic lifting of air means that the air is forced up because of an obstruction like a mountain. So in this we can see that the winds are blowing from the left and because there is a mountain the air will start rising up like this. Because the air cannot go through the mountain right. So the air will start rising up and this rising of air is known as the orographic lifting. It can be observed any time, be it summer or winter, day or night. If you've watched the climatology videos, you would know that the Norwesters were due to the orographic lifting of air. So the next trigger action is because of convergence. Convergence is when there is a low pressure on the surface. Like over here, we can see that this is an area of low pressure. It's written here as well. So when there is low pressure, the air starts to converge at the surface and diverge at some altitude. The air rises up and thunderstorms are formed. So I'll just draw a diagram of a low pressure. So for example, there is low pressure over here on the ground. So the air will start to converge near the surface of the earth. It will start rising and at some altitude, it will start diverging. So exactly same thing is happening in this diagram. The air is converging and it's rising and as it's rising, clouds will be formed. So this was the third trigger action. Now the last trigger action is because of frontal lifting. So frontal lifting is when there are fronts. Fronts are formed when two air masses meet. There are mainly two types, the cold and the warm front. Cold front is when cold air coming from behind collides with warm air ahead. And warm front is when the warm air coming from behind collides with cold air ahead. Thunderstorms are most likely formed with cold fronts because a lot of cumulonimbus clouds are formed. Like in this diagram, we can see that the cold air pool is approaching and there is warmer air in front of it. So when this cold pool of air approaches, it drifts below the warm air and the warm air starts to rise. Now, since the warm air is rising, there will be large clouds of vertical development like the cumulonimbus clouds or the towering cumulus clouds and these lead to thunderstorms. Now, frontal lifting can happen both over land or water at day or night. Cold fronts are more frequent in the winter season. So frontal lifting will be more in the winter season and the thunderstorms form in a line. These are known as squalls. So squall is nothing but a line of thunderstorms just ahead of a front like this. So this line of thunderstorm is a squall and these squalls occur because of frontal lifting of air. And I also told you that when there is a cold front, clouds with large vertical development are formed which are more likely to give thunderstorms. So these were the different trigger actions which lead to thunderstorm formation. Now after studying these trigger actions, we can classify the thunderstorms as either heat type 
or frontal type so heat type thunderstorms are more common in summer as the name suggests and frontal type are more common in the winter season because more fronts are seen in the winter season the heat type thunderstorms are more frequent over land these are formed during the day and are cleared by night because it was because of convection and convection was more prominent over land so i'll just write whereas the frontal type can form both on land and water and are formed in a line these were known as squall lines okay done now we saw the different trigger actions next we'll study about the stages of a thunderstorm formation so there are three stages the cumulus or the initial stage the mature stage and the dissipating stage let's talk about all these separately so the cumulus stage this is the initial stage it is when a lot of cumulus clouds come together and merge to form one large cb cloud so there were a lot of cumulus clouds and they merged to form one large cb cloud so when they merged the cloud would look like this a big cb cloud okay and the base of this cb cloud is around 5 nautical miles 5 nautical miles is around 9 kilometers so you can imagine how massive would it be we saw that for thunderstorm formation and cumulonimbus clouds trigger action and unstable air is very important and when we get some kind of a trigger action and the unstable air we get air currents which are like this we get rising air correct and the rising air is known as updrafts so these updrafts are very very strong and the order can be around 1000 to 4000 feet per minute so you can see how strong are these updrafts and since all the air is just rising right now in this stage there is no rain experienced and also this stage just lasts for 15 to 20 minutes okay i'll just complete this so no rain and the base is 5 nautical mile perfect now the next stage is the mature stage so as soon as the precipitation starts we know that it is the mature stage now so we can say that the precipitation marks the beginning of this stage and this precipitation can be a combination of ice crystals and water both so because of the updrafts the air continuously kept rising and rising and a massive cloud was formed and in this stage both updrafts and downdrafts are observed so the reason for updrafts is known which was because of the rising air like this now why do we have the downdrafts so the downdrafts are because of the precipitation so when the rain falls the air current is also changed towards the ground due to the weight of the water droplets or crystals whatever and thus downdrafts are also observed now since both updrafts and downdrafts are present a lot of turbulence is experienced inside and below the cloud formation of hail also takes place and this is the most dangerous stage because we can experience microbursts lightning icing and roll clouds in the mature stage we'll talk about all this in a while so here the updrafts are around 1000 feet per minute and the downdrafts are of 2 to 3000 feet per minute and this stage usually lasts for 20 to 30 minutes okay now coming on the last stage which is the dissipating stage so this stage begins when the moisture in the cloud is not sufficient to feed the storm so the cloud would look somewhat like this so this is the lower part and this was the upper part with the anvil i'll tell you what the anvil is so this is an anvil this extra protruding part of the cloud is the anvil so when you can see the anvil in the cloud you can say that the dissipating stage has started the anvil is formed when the cloud reaches the tropopause and we know that the cloud cannot climb above the tropopause so when it reaches the tropopause the wind spread the cloud horizontally and this horizontal movement of air leads to the formation of an anvil Now since the moisture supply wasn't enough to sustain the system there are no updrafts and the downdrafts remove the remaining moisture from the cloud so only downdrafts are experienced and no updrafts and this stage lasts for around 2 to 3 hours only downdrafts Okay so these were the three stages of a thunderstorm formation Let's talk about some hazards of flying around a thunderstorm. So the first one is lightning. We all are aware of what is lightning. Let's see how it's formed. 
So as the ice crystals inside a thunderstorm cloud moves up and down like this, they collide with each other. This separates the positive and the negative charges of the cloud. Okay, so the top of the cloud becomes positively charged while the base of the cloud becomes negatively charged. Like what we can see here. Now, since there's a negative charge near the bottom of the cloud over here, a positive charge on the ground right below the cloud is formed like this. And when the negatively charged electrons are attracted towards the positively charged electrons, a flow of negative charge rushes towards the earth. So the negative charge rushes to the ground and the positive charge comes up and we see lightning flashes. So this was the reason why we see lightning. This can mess up with the pilot's night vision and can even temporarily blind them. The compasses we have in the aircraft can also be affected by lightning. Now an important point to know in lightning is that it is most likely within 5000 feet of the freezing level. So freezing level is the altitude where the temperature is 0 degree celsius which is the freezing point of water. So lightning is most likely 5000 feet above and below the freezing level. And the temperatures over here are minus 10 degree celsius and plus 20 degree celsius. So lightning is most likely in this region. Okay, now the next hazard is turbulence. So you can experience really violent turbulence inside and around a CB cloud. So below the CB, it can be very, very dangerous to take off or land because you can experience wind shear. Clear air turbulence is also experienced on the sides of a CB. So if I draw, this is what it will look like. So this is a CB cloud. The cold air blows out of the cloud from the center, the purple arrows, and this CB is sucking up air from all other sides, which are the red arrows. Clear air turbulence is experienced on the sides, these, and the air that's blowing out of the cloud will result in a gust front. So this will be the gust front like this. Now this can be up to a height of 6,000 feet from the ground and can go out up to 15 nautical miles of the CB cloud. And this is where you will experience wind shear. Now the next hazard is a microburst. So this is what it looks like. I just draw it. So the air you see here coming from the center of the cloud is microburst. These are very, very strong downdrafts. Air currents coming down. The wind speeds can be up to 60 knots and can be experienced down up to 300 feet. The duration of a microburst is less than 5 minutes and the area is less than 4 kilometers. Now I'll tell you what happens when you get a microburst. So in this diagram only. So for example, you took off and you experience a microburst. So you'll get a lot of headwind initially because of which your lift will increase and the aircraft will start climbing very fast. Then at a point, the headwinds will no longer be there and your aircraft will be experiencing downdrafts. And these downdrafts will push you down like crazy. So your aircraft will start coming down very violently. And this is a very dangerous situation. Now, if you're landing and there's a microburst, your aircraft's ground speed will increase. And this increase in ground speed will be because of the increase in tailwinds. So since the tailwinds were a lot, your aircraft will be very, very fast. And it will be very difficult for you to land in those situations. So flying in a microburst can be a very, very dangerous situation. Now there's something known as a macroburst. Macroburst is exactly same as microburst, but it just occurs over a bigger area of more than 4 kilometers and the duration is more than 5 minutes. Now, how do we know we're getting a microburst? So there's an indication of microburst and it is known as Virga. So this is Virga. It is when the water molecules coming from the clouds are so fast that they evaporate before even reaching the ground. So when you see a Virga, you can make out that the downdrafts are so bad that even the water molecules are evaporating before reaching the ground. It's coming down at a very, very high speed. 
Now another hazard of a thunderstorm is icing. Icing can occur at all altitudes inside the cloud where the temperature is between 0 degree Celsius and minus 45 degree Celsius. And if there are a lot of large supercooled water droplets in the cloud, the icing will be really really bad. So you can get extreme icing from a thunderstorm. Moving further, let's talk about the movement of a thunderstorm. So the direction in which a thunderstorm moves depends on the winds at 10,000 feet. So if this is a CB cloud, the winds blowing at 10,000 feet will define the movement of the thunderstorm. And if it's a very very large storm, then it will be affected by the 18,000 feet winds. So the thunderstorm will move according to whatever is the wind direction at these altitudes. Okay, so with this we come to the end of thunderstorms. I hope you understood the topic well. Let me know if you have any doubts, any questions related to this and also if you want me to make specific videos on topics according to you, please write about it in the comment section and thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe.